Hey guys, welcome back to the Hybrid Network and another discussion regarding one of the characters from Stephen King's It. It's been a long time since we've done one of these, but I noticed that there was a particular interest in exploring the character and background of one of the most disturbing characters in the entire novel, if not Stephen King's entire body of work, Patrick Hockstetter. Now, this is an interesting case because in the grand scheme of things, Patrick isn't terribly important to the story of It, at least from a narrative perspective. He's one of the members of Henry Bauer's Gang of Misfits, and although each of the boys in this gang have their own degree of cruelty, Patrick is by far the sickest and most perverse of them all. While Henry himself goes through his own down spiral of hatred and manic psychopathic behavior, this is all traced back to his treatment at the hands of his father and the worldview that he was taught to believe. Henry hates because hatred was all he had ever known, and a lot of his actions were all motivated by intense emotional reaction. What's frightening about Patrick is that he's the exact opposite, not in a sense of violence, he's a terribly violent individual. What sets him apart from Henry is the fact that his sadism comes simply from his own mind. Patrick has been the way he is since a very young age, developing a strange worldview that leads to his psychopathic behavior. In Patrick's mind, he is the only real individual, that no other mind exists outside of his own. Other people in this world simply don't actually exist. Patrick's own reasoning is the only absolute within his worldview, and this serves as the primary motivation behind all of his perverse and sadistic acts. One of the first first, and perhaps worst acts he's ever committed, comes when Patrick was merely five years old, and he murdered his own baby brother, out of some irrational fear that he would replace Patrick as the only real being in existence. This level of thinking isn't actually anything new, however, as this pretty much describes the basis for solipsism. Solipsism is a pretty big part of Western philosophy, dating back to the early Greek philosopher Gorgias, stating three principles that develop into solipsism. One, nothing exists. Two, even if something exists, nothing can be known about it. And three, even if something can be known about it, it cannot be communicated to others. This would eventually develop over the years, and we could go all day on this, but I'll just bring us to the typical philosopher to turn to, Descartes. Descartes postulated on the idea of ultimate doubt in his Meditations on First Philosophy, that all preconceived certainties could not be considered necessarily true. Unless they could be proven to exist beyond a shadow of a doubt, their existence was brought into question. This extends to a number of different steps, steps that we're not going to get into here, but they all arrive at the conclusion of radical individualism. In which case, if everything that could be doubted is doubted, then the thing that doubts is the only thing that can be considered true. The mind. Not just any mind, though. His mind. Individual thought regarding everything we perceive is the only thing that could possibly be trusted in this scenario of radical doubt. Cogito ergo sum. I think, therefore, I am. So, as the cornerstone of Patrick's entire way of thinking, this leads to an individual that acts not out of hatred, but simply from a lack of care. All of his attacks and acts of vengeance are purely done out of his own desire and satisfaction. Patrick engages in many acts of sadism, both violent and sexual, throughout the novel, from torturing insects to touching others' private sexual body parts. Probably one of the most bizarre instances in the novel is his interaction with Henry Bowers in the junkyard, where in the midst of hanging out with his boss, he gives his de facto leader a handjob, even offering to perform oral sex on him. In a fit of rage, due to his own teachings by his father, Henry punches Patrick and threatens to unveil his secret if he ever tells anyone about what had just happened. Patrick's secret, in this case, being a truly horrible hobby of his. In that very junkyard, Patrick keeps a rundown refrigerator where he takes small animals that he's found and locks them inside. When he's not torturing them, he's essentially leaving them to die of suffocation and starvation. In fact, it's this very very hobby that leads to his demise, as when he goes to check on a particular victim that he left within, he's attacked by the one thing that he would fear more than anything. Leeches, for some reason. It attacks Patrick as a swarm of flying leeches, draining Patrick dry and then hauling him off to the sewers down below Derry. It's strange to consider, though one may be able to equate this to a fear of having what makes him special taken away. Leeches, as parasitic organisms, drain the life from their victims, the blood from their very veins. In the case of Patrick, this could possibly be equated to a fear of having his own essence, his existence as the only real being, stripped away from him, leaving him as merely a husk. But that's actually going to wrap up this video. Thank you all for watching, and let me know down in the comments what you would like to see covered in regards to it or any other Stephen King novel. This is Luke, and I'll catch you all next time.